Hello, friendly man here once again, and and today I'm going to try to teach you openings. I usually stay away from opening principles because it's a lot of memorization and it's more meant for the advanced player. Okay, so basically an opening is when you make small subtle weaknesses that people exploit. So here's the thing, openings is a lot of memorization and it really doesn't matter for the beginners. Okay? But I'm going to teach it to you a little bit so at least you have an idea of what's going on. Now an opening is when you play a move over and over and over again and we have certain names for it. Okay? So when we have certain names for the opening we can start making you know, we can start seeing the same patterns over and over again. Now, I'm going to show you this one right here. Uh, E4, E5, Knight attacks the pawn. Okay. Knight defends the pawn. And Bishop, ah, Bishop BB5. Okay. This is called the Royal Lopez. Or most people call it the Spanish game depending on where you are now this is actually a very interesting position see this bishop right here it is a white color bishop this bishop is actually attacking a dark color square when he takes here he can take here see that's what they're trying to do now so now that's basically an opening but you really want to know is opening principle. Like, what's the rule of thumb, basically? Now, the rule of thumb of, in chess is... Okay, see this uh, center? These are the most important squares of the board. Now, imagine for a second, you are on a, on a plain field, okay? and there's a huge giant hill in the middle of the field right here okay hey okay. if you can get a guy on that field then you can look down and can see what the other guys are up to hey okay. and that's why you try to occupy the high points or now I that's what I usually tell my students now I don't know you personally I have never met you so I don't know what kind of person you are if if I read into you you're more practical Hey, here, this is what I tell a practical person. A practical person, I say, now, in, in games, you want, you want pieces that occupy the middle. Because if something's happening on this side of the board, it's less jumps for him to get here. Okay? If it's happening on this side of the board, oh, less jumps to get here. If there's something happening here, less jumps. See, it's more of a branching out planes to get to the right spots at the right time. Because you don't want him in the corner of the board, eh? Because it's going to take him six jumps to get to the other end. And by that six moves, it might have relocated all the way on the other side. And see, that's why you don't want to, you know, you want to occupy the center. Occupying the center, you know, you can, you get more, you know, you get more play out of it. Okay, now the second thing here. Okay, the first thing you like to do is take your worst piece and make it your best piece. Okay, so what's your worst piece? Here's your two rooks. They're pretty bad. See, they're blocked in by their own pieces. What you should do is you should put them into a place that they allow them to move out a lot easier. So if he moves here, okay, he can take over this whole file. Okay. Now he controls this whole file, and he's still doing the job controlling this file. Okay. Let's say black does the same thing. Boom. Now they're, 
Now now they're fighting over this file. Let's say they keep on going. Okay. Boom. Now this guy has a half semi open file. Okay. He's blocked behind this pawn. Okay. And then boom. Let's say this rook comes there. Okay. Now this rook is better than this rook because he has more squares to go to. Okay. This rook is blocked in by his own man, so he's not that good. But if you count, black has one extra pawn, so black is winning this.